What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the German Bear Podcast and today we got the second seven round Chicago Bears mock draft of the 2023 Chicago Bears off season. <laughs> And I can't tell you guys enough how excited I am for today's video. Finally, another mock draft. Really over a month now, or almost two months, I think, uh, since my last mock draft. So today is the first mock draft after that. DJ Moore trade. Bears trading away the number nine overall pick. As well as the Chicago Bears spending big time in free agency as well. So tons of different needs now for the Chicago Bears going into the draft. And I'm so excited to talk about some of these prospects today here as well. So what What's new since the last mock draft? We got the number nine overall pick, obviously, as well as the number 61 overall pick in the 2023 NFL draft in that trade with the Carolina Panthers. So that's new for the 2023 draft. And then we also got a new comp pick since then, pick number 258 in round seven. So we definitely want to talk about all of those picks today as well. So with that being said, as always, leave a like on the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel to not miss out on any Bears content, draft, film rooms, whatever it is. So with that being said, let's not waste any more time and start off with today's mock draft. And we obviously got to start off with the number nine overall pick, the first pick that the Chicago Bears have in the 2023 NFL Draft. And I think it's a very intriguing situation. Now today, it doesn't include a trade, but I think that pick is definitely one that could be traded. If you want to feel free to check out my last video where I talked about the, all the possibilities that could happen with the number nine overall pick. But today, we're sticking with that number nine overall pick and picking at that spot. But like I said, very real scenario that we could trade down at that spot. And with the ninth overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Paris Johnson Jr., offensive tackle out of Ohio State. And I think Paris Johnson Jr. is a very intriguing offensive lineman in this year's draft class. I was really torn apart between him and Broderick Jones out of Georgia. I think Peter Skoronsky is a very talented offensive lineman as well, who probably suits best at guard, but I think you can give him a shot at tackle in the league as well. So I wouldn't rule him out uh, to Chicago at number nine as well. I think he's a phenomenal player as well. But today we're going with the toolsy guy in Paris Johnson Jr., who's just so damn talented and an absolute athletic player freak. As for his pros, I think his athletic profile with the talent that he has indicates a dominant NFL career at offensive tackle. He just needs to be developed in the right way. He has very quick feet to get into stance with a good base as well. He can anchor in pass pro as well and just played some good hand placements in pass pro which looked phenomenal at times. Also in the run game, love his aggressiveness and just his second level blocking looks phenomenal. Very fluid mover into the second level which is obviously important. And and also he has that ability as a leap blocker on screens as well, just getting out fast, having correct angles in the second level, and then just leading the way for the runner behind him. And then also look really good, I think, on tape on reach blocks, just setting the correct angle, getting into that position in front of that defensive lineman right away within a hurry. That looked phenomenal as well. And overall, I think Paris Johnson Jr. is a guy that still has the best football ahead of him and is not a finished product. Yet, as for his cons, obviously having the best football ahead of him, there comes some cons with him as well. I think his technique definitely needs some work, especially in the pass pro. Uh, his hand placement, like I said, can hit at times, but he needs to just work on his technique in that aspect of his game as well. And then also just he doesn't consistently get into his anchor and relies too much on his power. So I would love to see that improve uh, during his first NFL season as well. But overall, I think Paris Johnson Jr. is a great pick here at number nine. For me, in that sense, scenario Tyree Wilson out of Texas uh, Texas Tech excuse me that edge and Jalen Carter are both gone uh, you still got the other tackles on board you got Lucas Van Ness that you could potentially pick here but for me honestly we want to have a successful 2023 season where Justin Fields can finally develop we got the quarterback we got a really good guard out of free agency as well in Nate Davis so he's a really good addition to the offense as well but for me that right tackle spot is a really big issue right now and I think it also makes sense. Obviously, Paris Johnson Jr. played left tackle mostly of his, or 
pretty much all of last season for Ohio State. But we got Braxton Jones at left tackle. He showed some really promising stuff and was a very toolsy guy. So he developed a lot in that year. And if he takes another big step into that positive direction, we could have a left tackle of the future right there out of the fifth round. So I'm definitely just still giving him one more year to show what he can do. So for that time, Paris Johnson Jr. will move over to right tackle. I think that you can hide the worst pass blocker at the moment because he still has some deficits in the pass game. But in the run game, the guy will get out and just destroy people right away. And like I said, he's a very talented player that just needs a bit of more development. And then if Braxton Jones doesn't work out at left tackle, you can consider moving Paris Johnson Jr. back to left tackle right. And then you got your potential left tackle of the future there. Obviously, open opens up another hole at right tackle, but we're trying to fix the offensive line here with Paris Johnson Jr. at number nine, and I personally think that's a pretty damn good pick. So with that being said, we want to move on to round number two now. And with the 53rd overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Keon White, edge out of Georgia Tech. The 6'5", 285-pound monster off the edge or off the defensive line pretty much uh, could be still available in round two at pick number 53. I think some people really overhyped him after the senior bowl, which I understood because he looked absolutely phenomenal at it. DJ Darren, uh, Daniel Jeremiah, excuse me, had him at number eight, his eighth best prospect at one point in his top 50, but now moved him back into the 20s, 30s range. And I think overall, Keon White is as talented as it gets, but he is still somewhat of a raw player and he could fall to 53 because of the depth of this year's edge class. Now, could he go earlier, way earlier? Yes, he could, but now we're just pretending that he's here right at 53 and it is in my opinion a possible scenario for his pros i think the guy just shines with raw power in his rushes looks absolutely crazy uh, out there and if he connects and gets access to the chest of an offensive lineman he just dominates all day long very strong and powerful hands as well and i love his quickness off the snap as well at 6'5 285 pounds guy has a relentless motor always chasing for the quarterback and right now primarily wins with the bull rush so his repertoire still needs some work but overall had some nice spin moves in there as well now spin move is also rush which is basically just hit and miss right so if you want von miller and you just a master at the spin move it could work for you all the way but keon white is not there yet but he had some nice spin moves in there that really helped him to win that second wave that just counter move in a pass rush that he used at times and he like I said, really helped him at times. Also in the run game, is a really patient player and his eyes don't fool him often. Had a great play against North Carolina where he just easily just crashed into the running back, recognized that the ball was still in the QB's hands on a rollout, so he reacted fast, closed out, and made a tackle for a loss. And then also one big thing about Keon White as well is his versatility. He can play basically all across the defensive line with his height and weight which is great, but also has just elite speed off the edge as well. But there's one play, for example, against North Carolina again, where he was at three technique, beat a double team for a sack with a rip move with the first guy and then just powered through the second offensive lineman. So the guy displayed so many great things on tape. He will be an absolute massive get for the Bears. As for his cons, I mean, consistency is definitely a thing. He had some games where he really was unnoticed or you didn't really see a lot of him and then he had games again where he absolutely dominated and also like I said his pass rush arsenal and technique could improve as well he needs to work on some counter moves in the future as well as the block shutting in the run game is not elite yet but I think he can definitely work with that and just he needs to use his powerful hands a bit better in certain situations and then also experience is a bit of a problem he started off his college career at Old Dominion at tight end and then moved on to the defensive line but he really looked good last year for Georgia Tech and I'm easily willing to give him a chance at 53 for a potential future superstar at the defensive line position and with that being said we want to move on to the second pick that we have in the 2023 NFL draft in the second round and with the 61st overall pick in the 2023 NFL draft the Chicago Bears select Keanu Benton defensive lineman out of Wisconsin <music> The 
Benton is a six foot four, 309 pound interior defensive lineman who is just a guy with incredible, incredible power and is one of the bigger risers over the last couple of months in that entire draft process. For his pros, like I said, incredible power, raw strength that he has. Also very strong and violent hands as well in the run game as well as a pass rusher as well. He's a phenomenal run stuffer right away. He just closes gaps within a second and sheds blocks with ease and he can also easily take on double teams and doesn't get moved at all so he just opens up the gaps for the linebackers to make a tackle. And then also very high motor player that never gives up. And then also since the senior bowl displayed so many great things as a pass rusher as well that you necessarily didn't notice first on tape but as soon as you saw it on the senior bowl and then went back to the tape you looked phenomenal actually in some rushing situations as for his cons right now like I said very solid rusher but nothing too outstanding yet but he really like I said showed promising stuff at the senior bowl just dominating one-on-ones all week long and then one thing that you can talk about him is basically the elite explosiveness off the line to get out of his stance fast but Overall, I think uh, Keanu Benton is a perfect fit for the Chicago Bears defense. If we get him at 61, would be a dream. Will he be there? I think that's the theme for today's entire mock draft. I don't know if those guys will be there because those are all so talented players. And I don't know if he will be there at 61, Keanu Benton. But if he's there, that's a no-brainer for me. Stack and just beef up the defensive line first with Keon White and then, and then with Keanu Benton. I think you built a very solid young foundation there as well. He would just be a perfect fit at nose tackle or three technique for the Chicago Bears to help stuff the run right away and have some pass rush upside as well. And with that being said, we want to move on to round number three, just three picks later with the 64th overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. The Chicago Bears select Luke Weipler. Offensive center out of Ohio State. And yes, yet another Ohio State offensive lineman. And I think Luke Weiper is an outstanding center that you can get. And one of the best ones, obviously, in this year's draft class overall. He stands at 6'3", 303 pounds, and was definitely really impressive on tape. I didn't have him on my radar before that. I just saw him in some mock drafts and then finally got to the tape and was really impressed what Weiper could do on the field. For his pros, I think he has phenomenal anchor and pass pro to lock down defensive linemen. Very quick feed in combination with that as well and then a very good base too he just stonewalled into your defensive lineman left and right on tape and looks like a very smart player as well that picks up stunts really fast very agile mover with some speed in the second level as well on pull blocks he looked absolutely phenomenal and then also has some great angles in the second level too with a high motor as well so he never gives up on a play always engaged with defensive linemen linebackers whatever it is just trying to make a play and a good block on the football field as for his cons the only true thing that I can personally say is he has shorter arms and is not that long of an athlete which can cause bull rushes or bull rush losses in the NFL with very more strong or very much stronger defensive linemen in the league but overall I think Luke Weipler is a phenomenal player that could fit in right away as a starting center because I know we could move Cody Weiher back or play with Lucas Patrick one more season. But for me, honestly, like let's get a player in that can start for many, many years in that offense, get some consistency on the offensive line, especially that center position is so important for the chemistry and the call outs at the offensive line. So let's get some chemistry in there with Justin Fields, give him a young center that he can develop with and not just Try that experiment with offensive linemen out of free agency. So Luke Weipler, my choice here at 64. But once again, not sure if he will be there. And with that being said, we're moving on to round number four. And with the 103rd pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Jaden Reed, wide receiver out of Michigan State. The Chicago Bears add yet another wide receiver to their offense because I think First of all, we're in the fourth round, right? And a player like Jaden Reed is still available, which is a no-brainer for me because he will be one of the best players available at that spot if he's still available. And for me overall, he's a 5'11", 187-pound wide receiver that just is once again a pretty sudden route runner that adds another dimension to the team. 
because he's somewhat of that security blanket, but also a guy that can take the top of a defense. And I think that's always a valuable asset, first of all, to a team. But also, I think next year, you got to extend Darnell Mooney. You got to extend, I think, Chase Claypool as well. So, if you're not in love with both players and let someone walk, you still got Jaden Reed as that fourth receiver last year that now suddenly in 2024 become your wide receiver two, wide receiver three, whatever on the squad next to DJ Moore. So I think that's definitely not a bad idea to add another weapon and you can have enough weapons on an offense to be honest. For Jaden Reed, his pros, I think he's, like I said, another Sutton route runner that is really good. And like Tank Dell, really love his top of the route when you see it on tape. As well as the senior bowl, he looked really phenomenal as well. Uh, he can play outside and in the slot, so a bit of versatility as well. And he's a guy with 4-4-5 speed that can take the top of a defense, like I said. Really quick player off the line and into his breaks, love that as well. And then against zone, he finds that green constantly too. Great hands, didn't drop too many balls. And then as soon as the ball is in his hands, he has a really good yards after the catch ability as well making people miss and just making something after the initial catch as for his cons I mean the size could definitely limit him in some ways as a player but I I think at 5'11", it's more like the weight. He could maybe add a bit more mass to his body, but that's basically it for him. And then he's also not a really good blocker as well. So he won't give you great blocks in the run game, but that's not an issue for me, especially at pick 103. You add a dynamic, explosive playmaker that could be a great weapon for the future. And the Chicago Bears offense could definitely look better with him in 2023 already as well. And with that being said, we're still in round number four with the 133rd overall pick in the fourth round of the 2023 NFL Draft. The Chicago Bears select Israel Abanakanda running back out of Pitts. Abana Kanda is probably my favorite running back in the 2023 NFL Draft class and was honestly one of the only players that I knew pre-draft process because I'm not watching too much college sports or college football in general. I will definitely change that in 2023, but one of the only guys that I knew pre-draft was actually Abana Kanda because I watched some random pit game and uh, he was just absolutely phenomenal and was like, holy damn, who's that guy? And I looked up and he was a senior and I was like, shit, I really need to look at him in a draft process then and as soon as I dig deeper into his tape, man, this guy is an absolute speed demon that I want on the Chicago Bears. I just 100% want him on the team. He's 5'10", 216 pounds. And for his speed, uh, for his pros, excuse me, for his speed, like I said, he has speed for days and also just tons of gears that he can shift into also what i love is that he fits perfectly in the wide zone scheme of the chicago bears ran a lot at pit and he could be just a plug and play player that you can use on that offense in certain situations right away i think also great contact balance guy a guy that runs with some aggressiveness which i love also some very nice one cuts to find the cutback lane on certain situations as well just displaying some kind of good vision there as well and then also just a very strong runner that doesn't shy away from contact and I think he's a pretty underrated catcher as well didn't get a lot of opportunities at Pitt but I think he could definitely use some more uh, scenarios or catches right there with the Chicago Bears because he's really a outstanding guy with the ball in his hands as for his cons I mean his patience could be better at times to the gap to the line right and that also just then causes him to not make the correct read at all times. So he just needs to learn to be a bit more patient and trust himself a bit more. And then also he's not the most agile runner. He got speed, he got power, but his agility is not the best out of this work right here. But overall, right now the Bears running back room is looking pretty solid with Khalil Herbert, Travis Homer, as well as Deontay Foreman, who we signed in free agency. But for me personally, that's such a deep running back class. And if the fourth round still has has Israel Abanakanda on the board. I think you easily need to take him. I think Travis Homer can easily be cut. So uh, that's not a big issue. And I think he just adds so many more aspects to that offense, which I would love to see. So Israel Abanakanda, definitely a guy to look out for in this year's draft class. Like I said, would love to have him on the Bears. And with that, we want to move on to round number five. And with the 137th overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Yaya Diaby Edge out of Louisville.
Diaby is a 6 foot 3, 262 pound edge rusher out of Louisville, like I said, and he was one of the more impressive players that I watched that I would love the Bears to snag in the fifth round, would be an absolute steal in my opinion. The guy is such a strong player that just wins with the bull rush right away, so pretty similar scenario to Keon White at the moment, but the guy just has so much athletic upside. I mean, we're talking about a guy that ran a 4.5140 yard dash, which is not as important, but the important number is 1.56. 10 yard split and that was the second fastest behind Nolan Smith out of Georgia that elite freak athlete that had insane numbers as well but he was not far behind and he's definitely a heavier player I think he got definitely 20 30 more pounds on him so that was really impressive but it just shows and you see it on tape as well his is explosiveness is off the charts overall and then flashes a very good speed rush as well on tape with a rip move and didn't use it too often like I said really relied on his bull rush and his power but I think he flashed some really good counter moves already that he could develop and refine in the NFL also a high motor player that never stops on the play and also against a run sets the edge really well on the backside love that on tape as well as for his cons overall like I said pass rush repertoire needs Need some work as well as his pass rush technique but like I said he flashed some really good things already his rip move looked really good with that speed off the edge so I'm excited and if the Bears really get Yaya Diaby I will be super happy because he had once again another really talented defensive lineman to that team and the Bears desperately need help at the defensive line because we weren't able to generate pressure at all last year so with that that defensive line already looks much better and much more improved and I would be so excited like I said if Yaya Diaby ends up in a Chicago Bears uniform and with that being said, we want to move on still in the fifth round now with the 150th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. The Chicago Bears select Davis Allen, tight end out of Clemson. Ryan Poles and the Chicago Bears add another weapon to the offense once again in Davis Allen. He's a 6'6", 6 6, 245-pound tight end out of Clemson that for his pros has a massive catch radius with super strong hands. So he's definitely a guy that you could use in the red zone to get some targets to him and just let him go up and get it and he will certainly possibly but very possibly could do that in those situations. Also, his box out ability stood out in certain situations as well, just putting his body into the superior position uh, against the cornerback or the linebacker, whatever it was. Also, pass blocking wise, he looked really solid. And as soon as he gets rolling, he is an absolute truck machine that doesn't go to the ground easily. And then also against zone coverages, he understands the zones, knows where the soft spot is, sits in there and makes an easy catch for a couple of yards. Yards. As for his cons, he's not a really good run blocking tight end. His angles really didn't impress me overall on tape. Also, his speed, we're talking about a 4.8440 yard time. And you see it on tape as well. He's not the fastest player and he doesn't have elite acceleration or something like that. But like I said, as soon as he's moving, he's pretty much unstoppable. And then also, he's not a very natural separator, which I think is definitely the combination of his size, weight, and speed. He's just not a great separator as a route runner. But like I said, he uses his body the right way to gain separation still. And overall, I think that's a really good addition to this offense because obviously we signed Robert Tunyon out of the Green Bay Packers. But for me personally, we still need youth at the tight end position behind Cole Komet. And obviously he's not that old, Robert Tunyon. He's still only 28, but I think he's also only on a one-year deal. And you want to develop a guy uh, under those two players right there. And I think Davis Allen in the fifth round would be an absolute massive get for the Chicago Bears just to have another tight end in that room because the Bears also ran some 13 personnel, right? So he could see some playing time early on as well on some little sneaky routes where he just gets schemed open, gets rolling, and make some extra yards or like I said could be used as a red zone threat for Justin Fields as well but I really like the idea to get a young tight end that you can develop behind those two veterans that you have that can also be a very valuable player in the past game as well for Justin Fields immediately and with that being said we want to move on to round number seven and with the 219th overall pick in the 2023 NFL draft the Chicago Bears select Corey Trice cornerback out of Purdue.
Bears finally select a cornerback here at 219, and I think Corey Trice is a player that could go in round four or could go undrafted. So he's a very special player that I don't certainly know where he could potentially go in uh, or in which round he could potentially go in because I saw everything from round four to undrafted to round six, whatever it was. But I'm really confused where he could go. But in this scenario now, he's still available at 219. And the Chicago Bears get him here. For his pros, I mean, Corey Trice at 6'3", 206 pounds. is a very long, rangy corner with great arm length. And had, for his size, some really good breaks on some certain rounds as well. He's an absolute press beast that can just pin you at the line of scrimmage and a very good tackler with some juice, I think, in my opinion as well. He plays the run pretty well, doesn't shy away from that too, and then also has some pretty damn good ball skills as well. Had a really good combine, impressed me there with a 4-4-7-4 yard dash and a 11 feet broad jump. So a very elite athlete right there as well. As for his cons, I mean, fluidity is obviously a problem with Within his hips at his size and his eyes also get caught in the backfield at times for too long uh, his technique needs some improvement and he also lacks some long-term speed to close in after getting beat but I think his length definitely makes up for it in certain situations but right there that's a developmental corner in Corey tries right there that could potentially play on special teams right away because I think he's a very dangerous player with his speed and size. But overall, he could be, like I said, a long time developmental corner that you could develop into a starter maybe in the future or a very good backup as soon as one of the starters gets down so I think that's never a bad idea right there obviously we could have taken corner in the earlier rounds as well but for me like I said beefing up offensive line and defensive line should be the priority heading into this year's draft class obviously depending on who's the on the board at the moment but right there at 219 I think you get a very talented player in Corey tries beef up the secondary get a long corner in there that could be a long-term player right there maybe a backup in the future and I would be excited about him as well and with that being said we're getting to the last pick that we have in the draft that comp pick that we got and with the 258th pick in the 2023 NFL draft the Chicago Bears select Charlie Thomas linebacker out of Georgia Tech Charlie Thomas is a pretty special player, 6'3", 216 pounds, and I know we signed tons and tons of linebackers already, but I think uh, he's still a very talented player that you can use in certain situations really well. Uh, for his pros, he's a player that is very fluid in coverage. I think he's a really good coverage linebacker overall, a very slippery player that recognizes plays fast at a 4'5", speed, 40-yard dash as well with real solid range overall as well, and he's just a player with tons of athletic upside now for his cons i think he's not good against the run his block shedding against the run looked not good and like i said overall was not great against the run but for me overall he's just a player that could have a specialized role maybe a player that can be a coverage guy in nickel packages or just more like a hybrid player overall right but he can be a player right away for special teams that is a pretty solid blocker with great speed and then like i said you can develop him into a specialized role player that come in in certain situations and just cover for you against tight ends in zone coverage in man coverage whatever it is i think I think he's capable of doing that but overall I think he's an intriguing player that could be there at one of the last picks in this year's draft and I think you can't go wrong with a linebacker in that scenario so with that being said that finishes off the mock draft 2.0 I think we did a pretty good job at stacking up the defensive line and the offensive line as well and getting some skill position players in there as well later on so for a quick little overview, who did we take? Number nine overall, we went with offensive tackle Paris Johnson Jr. Now we followed that up with edge Keon White out of Georgia Tech. Still in round two, we picked Keanu Benton, defensive lineman out of Wisconsin. Then in round three, we beefed up the offensive line this time with Luke Weipler, center out of Ohio State once again. Now round four, we picked a skill position player in Jaden Reed, wide receiver in Michigan State, followed that up with Israel Abanakanda, running back out of Pitt. Then once again, went defensive line with Yaya Diaby, edge out of Louisville, followed that up with tight end Davis Allen with the 150th overall pick, tight end out of Clemson, and then finished off the draft with two seven-round picks in first, Corey Trice, 
cornerback out of Purdue. And then the last pick was Charlie Thomas, linebacker out of Georgia Tech. So overall, with this mock draft, the Bears now have a couple of defensive linemen to work with to beef up the defensive line and get more pressure on the opposing quarterbacks. Also, Justin Fields got two new offensive linemen out of Ohio State to just get better protection for him in the future. He also got another wide receiver and running back plus a tight end to work with. And then we also got some role players, cornerbacks, and linebackers later in that draft class. So with that being said, that's the end of the episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Definitely let me know in the comments down below what you think of my mock draft 2.0. Did you like it or not? Like and subscribe if you liked the video. Check out Instagram and Twitter if you want to as well. And as always, always guys bear down